fundamental part of this game. 0-16 against them. You've got to overcome that and know that you can beat them uh, or it's going to be a long night for Smyrna as well. We're going to go down right now and get your Steve Martin construction field report and your coin toss as it happens. Donnie Johnson has our uh, official mic down there, and here we go. If you have any penalties during the game, I'll call for a pass, and you guys, one of you guys, come to me, okay? Don't make me have to try to find you. Number two, sportsmanship. You guys are responsible for your team's sportsmanship. Vice versa, you're responsible for your team. Let's make sure we have good sportsmanship throughout the game, okay? Fair enough. You're going to call the coin toss, correct? So Riverdale's going to call the coin toss. If I drop it, we'll pick it back up and we'll keep the process. Gentlemen, this side represents tails, this side represents heads, okay? Here we go, good laugh for me. Heads. Called heads, correct? Peek in, it is tails. Smyrna's won the so toss. Smyrna has won the toss. Smyrna's won the first. Everybody and finish. they defer, so they will have the ball in the second half, and uh, Riverdale will have the ball first on offense. The teams are prepared to come out here on the field. It's standing room only. The bleachers are full. The uh, traffic down Sam Ridley is backed all the way up as far as we can see and they're parking in the empty lot that is uh, across from the high school. That's how many people are here. Capacity crowd. This could be for the Region 4-5A title this year. Where else would you want to be here tonight? Online at GoInsideSports.com. We welcome visitors from Birmingham, Alabama, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Leggett, Texas. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, the kickoff is on the way here on AM 1450, WGNS, and GoInsideSports.com. Jeff and Cal Bowen have a new location and an expanded paint and body shop at 459 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Bowen's Body Shop, family-owned and operated with all work on site. Let Jeff Bowen put his over 30 years of experience to work for you. If you have that fender bender, or worse, you hit that deer like somebody did. Bowen's Body Shop is the place to call, 896-0008. An easy number to remember, 896-0008. Bowen's Body Shop. Greg's Tax Service at 142 Heritage Park. Capacity crowd here. Boy, John, I just can't get over this crowd. Well, it's unbelievable. And they're still coming in, Brian. We've got we probably got a highway full of cars still trying to get into this place. And boy, if you didn't get a seat here about 645, you're probably not going to get one. Paul Boykin, Jeremy McClain are deep back. We can feel the atmosphere, and I'll tell you what, these, this crowd pumped. Osford kicks it off. It is going to be taken by Boykin. He's at the 20, lowers the head, and gets it to about the 23. Your Mullins Jewelry official kickoff time is 7.29. Mullins Jewelry is on the Uptown Murfreesboro Square. You know, with the temperature getting a little cooler, it's, it's about Christmas time. Charlie has a wide selection of jewelry for that very special someone at Mullins Jewelry. And you'll have your Mullins Jewelry halftime show coming up with Jeff Jordan. 18-yard return that time, and the Warriors roll out here. In the wing tee, of course, Scott Thomas under center. That's the offense that they like to run. Try to go up the middle to Thomas, and he gets maybe a yard. I think both teams want to come out here early, John, and make a statement uh, one way or the other, offensively or defensively. Well, I think uh, Smyrna wants to make sure that they can establish that they have their, offense, their defensive line can uh, live up to the task of uh, stopping Riverdale. Cody Sutherland, the 6'1", 250-pound lineman, is the one who made the tackle the last time. Second down and nine from the 24 of Riverdale. Option, and the ball is loose, and I don't know who has it. It may be the Bulldogs. Ball came loose. Scott Thomas was carrying, and it's going to be Riverdale. Boy, that was close. Well, there were three Smyrna guys all around it, but uh, Riverdale's the one that came up with it. Michael Brooks, uh, Brian, is in that in the ball game uh, that we did not. Paul Boykin, big Travis Lyle all over the football. Michael Brooks is set up as a receiver to the right on this third and seven from their 26. 
Goes around the right side and nowhere to go for Jeremy McLean. And Riverdale forced a punt here and a nice tackle by Michael Bolton. So fourth down, and Smyrna did what they wanted to do, and that's old Riverdale to three and out. Did a great job, and uh, they keyed themselves. It looks like they're keying on McLean, and um, we'll see how that goes further on tonight. The wing tee can use three or four different people in that backfield. She's got so many people you've got to key on in that wing tee, and especially with Riverdale. They've got a lot of weapons there. Here's Scott Thomas with the punt, and it's a pretty good one. And it's on the bounce. It's going to have to be caught. And brought down right around the 27 is Hendricks. And a 45-yard punt, a very nice punt. Hendricks is a young man, Antoine Hendricks, that uh, we didn't get to see in the last game here, John. And uh, only three-yard return for him. But he was hurt in the Ravenwood game, and I, I think that made a big difference for the Bulldogs. Oh, definitely. He's a, a, a solid back and uh, really makes a good one-two punch along with uh, uh, Harris. So uh, see some exciting things from him tonight. No score, just underway. Riverdale was held to three and out. This is the first offensive possession for the Bulldogs. First and ten from their 28-yard line. From the shotgun is Sonny Gray, and I see whistles and maybe a procedure penalty here. I think somebody on that left side moved for Smyrna, and they did. That's going to back him up five yards and bring up a first and 15. A little anxious to get started there. Coming out of the blocks a little bit. Last year, in the regular season, Riverdale beat Smyrna 51-20. Had a 23-0 third quarter. Then in the playoff game, the Bulldogs were outscored 14-0 in the third. Riverdale took a 35-21 win last year. Up the gut, and it's Macy O'Harris, open field 40-45, and right across into Riverdale territory at the 49-yard line. Ben Attackpoo shoestringed him out there. Boy, Macy O just turned on the Jets, and they're going to mark him back at the 49 of Smyrna, but nonetheless, a great run that time of 26 yards. Well, definitely a very good start here. An offensive line blew a hole open that time for Harris. And, uh, boy, he scampered in a great saving tackle by a tack two. That was, that, was a, that was a touchdown saver there. First and ten with the first bank first down. Snap again. Goes to Maceo and off the left guard. He picks up maybe three, four yards. Sack it down. Now the ball in Riverdale territory. Sack it down in six. Ball at the 47. Well, uh, this is exactly the start that Smyrna wanted to establish the ground game. That's going to make that passing attack that much harder. Twins to the right, one receiver to the left. And the back split to either side of Sonny Gray. They're going right side, and it's snuffed out. Hendricks had nowhere to go that time. It's snuffed out by Chad Hunter. Boy, he knew what was going on there. Yeah, nobody fooled that time. Hunter into that backfield quickly, too. Need to remind folks, uh, Siegel is at Laverne tonight, Blackman at Wilson Central, Eagleville is at White House Christian, make that White House heritage. John, a big game, Oakland at Lebanon tonight, too. The Patriots need that one. Oh, that, that may be more important for Oakland than anybody that's playing tonight in terms of the uh, importance of a win. Got a tough row to hold uh, uh, with these up. two teams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have to play these two in the last two weeks. Third and 11 with the loss for the Bulldogs. Sonny Gray back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, going left side. They tuck it and run, and he's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage by a herd of Riverdale Warriors led by Chad Hunter with his sack of tackle. Boy, he's a madman. You know, linebacker stunning on that time, uh, uh, making the appearance it's going to be a blitz, and uh, they did not, but they did get some penetration and kept Sonny Gray at bay. Good containment that time by the Riverdale Warriors. And that brings uh, up fourth down here too, John. It kept him from uh, getting that first down. Scott Thomas is the deep man back to return the punt. Don't know that we've seen that this year. Now, he may have done that, but not in any of the games we broadcast. So it's quarterback punting to quarterback returning, and there's going to be no return on it. It angles right side and it's going to roll down to the 15-yard line. So a 36-yard punt for Sonny Gray did exactly what he wanted to do, and it rolled dead between the 15 and 16. 
No score here between these two Region 4, 5, 8 Titans. It's nothing, nothing. 7.04 left here in the first. Well, that was a good uh, defensive stand there by Riverdale and Brian this time. Uh, 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 Riverdale really needs to move the football world. Did not have success in their first offensive series. There's three and out. I'm sorry, Brian. There's so many formations that you can run out of this one T. A lot of misdirection. You may see a little bit of that coming out of here. Thomas under center and sends McLean in motion. And they go up the center. It wasn't McLean who got the carry. It was someone else and maybe only a yard out of it. Sutherland with the tackle. And that was Monty Newsom, number 27, on the carry. They're going to give him two yards. A cool night, 51 degrees here at game time. He's going to drop into the 40s tonight. Ball is at the Riverdale 18 yard line, second and eight for the Warriors. Play may be going to the right side. Looks like they're trying to spread their blockers out that way. And it is, it's Scott Thomas who's gonna hurdle over the 25, get to around the 26 yard line. It's gonna bring up a five yard gain for him before Ruben Shadrick made the tackle and third and short. I really think Scott Thomas is the key to Riverdale's offense tonight, and he's been the, probably their leading rusher most of uh, the year. And uh, he is what makes this wing tee go, and uh, they may have to depend on him a little bit more tonight than usual. Third and very short, like third and one, ball at the 25 of Riverdale. And quarterback sneak, and it looks like the line, boy. You see that off that offensive line push there for Riverdale? That's that was one of the keys you mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah, great explosiveness and Scott Thomas, I think, has picked up the first down here. Moves the chains for the first bank. First down for the Warriors. And that was big, not only for the fact that they got a first down, Brian, but it also helps field position because you didn't want to be punting back there from the, about the 12 yard line or the eight yard line. Now they've got they've got a little got themselves a little breathing room now. Ball at the 28. First and ten. Riverdale working on their end. Closer to the school here is if you were looking at it from the home side, from the uh, press box, moving from right to left. McLean is in motion. Hand off to Newsom, and man, he is hit and then pushed back. And what a gigantic hit by Matt Raprano. My goodness, no game. Looks like he hit a brick wall. Maybe even lost a yard, Brian, but I tell you what, that was a hit. And uh, so far, the largest gain that Riverdale's had uh, tonight has been five yards. Second down and 11. Thomas sending a man in motion, now rolling out. Now it's in trouble, has a little room up the middle. Gets across the 30 and up to the 31-yard line. Picked up four on that before being shoestringed by Jeremy King. A little bit of a busted play that time, and uh, Scott did the, the right thing by just trying to get as much positive yardage as he possibly could, and uh, gives him at least a chance here for a third and seven, a chance for the first down. This is something Riverdale's not uh, accustomed to, is that the third and long. They're more accustomed to third and short, and uh, puts them in a passing situation, definitely. No score with four minutes on the first quarter clock. Warriors with that third and seven. But Newsom, no, pitch outside, McLean, he's got the first down, 40, 45, 50, stutter down the sideline, and is going to be pushed out of bounds somewhere around Smyrna territory by Orlando Martin. Boy, what a great fake that time, John, and uh, well, allowed him to get outside, Monty Newsom. It was a tremendous pitch out by by uh, Scott, and the only way that would have been successful is do exactly what he did, a pitch at the very last second, and Newsom uh, had a lot of sidelines to work. What he did was wait there's a critical time in there and he waited to the very last minute before making that pitch and made the defense commit there 17 yard pickup for Newsom. ball is at the Riverdale 48 lone back and that's Newsom, and he's going to sneak forward for maybe a yard well, there definitely isn't much in the inside tonight that's for sure Cody, Cody Sutherland on the tackle for the Bulldogs Smyrna you go up the middle tonight, you're going to get hit. That's for sure. Uh, great job by the defensive line for Smyrna. Containing inside, so far the biggest yardage has been on the outside. 
the latest scores now. We do have a new score, don't we, John? We do. Wilson Central leading Blackman 7 to nothing in the first quarter of play. 3 to nothing. Tigers won today. Nothing, nothing. Mets in St. Louis. Sack it down at 9 here. No score. Scott Thomas finds some room. 45-40, 35-30, 25-20, 15-10. Can he cut back inside? Yes, and he scores the Warrior touchdown from 51 out. What a run, Scott Thomas. Broke a seam there. I, I'll tell you what, a tremendous fake as well, but, boy, he it, it, it faked me. I, I'm, I've got to be honest with you. I just didn't see it for the very last second, and, boy, it was pay dirt. So uh, it took the line. It took everybody for Smyrna to the right side, and he stayed in the middle and is home free. Here's the extra by Driscoll. It's up and good. Riverdale leads 7-0, three minutes. And one second on the first quarter clock. Stay with us. Hi, this is Chuck Lewis, and we're celebrating our 100th anniversary at First Bank. This is a birthday where you get the present. What a great drive there by the Riverdale Warriors, John, and they get points out of it. Seven plays, 84 yards, and a one yard, a 20-yard run by Newsom, and a 51-yard run, touchdown run by Scott Thomas. And now an onside kick. It's going to bounce high, and they're going to have to capture it, and they do, 30, 35, and that's going to be where Rodriguez Wilkes is taken down. So the ball at the 40 in some pretty good field position there now, John, for the uh, Smyrna Bulldogs, but they're trailing here 7-0 on a very impressive run by Scott Thomas of 51 yards. Well, now the pressure's on the on the uh, Smyrna D offense this time, Brian. Uh, they've been moving the ball, but they they've been stalled here the, on the last couple of series. But uh, they are making some, they are moving the football. We haven't seen Sonny Gray uh, put the ball in the air as of yet. I said 40, and I need to make a correction. The ball is at the Smyrna 34. Direct snap to Rodriguez, and he's going to be smothered around the 35. So maybe a yard out of it. Back it down now, and we'll call it nine. So a gain of one there. No score, 11 in Oakland at the end of one, and it's Laverne three, Siegel nothing at the end of one. All of that on your Jennings and Ayers Funeral Home scoreboard. Seven nothing Warriors here, 218 left in the first. Gray back to pass, three step drop now out of the pocket. He's running and he's sacked. The brown bag for Ladarius Burge. Well, in order to pass the ball, you've got to have time to throw. And so far, on two attempts, Gray has not had a, a chance. Great pressure by Riverdale. Puts uh, Smyrna now in a hole third and 14. Definitely a passing situation here. And, Brian, that makes the... Uh, that really makes it even tougher because there's going to be some pressure coming uh, from those linebacking four for Riverdale. 4-3 Two. uh, on the defense there, Brian. Two wide left, one to the right. Wilkes is the one to the right. And they hand off to Hendricks. And Hendricks, the ball's loose, and I think Riverdale has it. Riverdale has the ball on the fumble, yes. Right at the Smyrna 40. That thing popped up in the air about five yards, and uh, Riverdale pounced on it. And that warrior was the Brian Lawrence, number 37. The Brian Lawrence, the 5'8", 150-pound junior. Well, we've... Uh, that's a tough break. And that's just exactly what we said in the, in the pregame show. You've got to avoid those kind of mistakes. Well, now it's up to the Smyrna Bulldogs here to stop Riverdale with their defense. Riverdale already up by a touchdown here, 7-0. 125 left to play in the first. Draw play, it's Chad Hunter, and he picked up four. Reuben Shadrack on the stop. With the three-yard gain, it's going to make it sack it down, seven yards to go. Ball at the 37. Travis Milenthal over the football. To the right side, Julius Worthington as a receiver. 
Another to the left, and I believe that's Michael Brooks. Jeremy McLean in motion, pitch over to him, right side, has some room, 35-30, cuts back inside, 25-20, and across the 20 to around the 17-yard line, maybe even 18-yard line, just depends on where they spot the ball there. And an 18-yard pickup. Let's go down to uh, Donnie Johnson with the Steve Martin Construction Field Report and uh, notice that uh, Sonny Gray limping just a little bit. Well, he was, Brian, on that sack by Ladarius Burris when Sonny was rolling out. Uh, Ladarius got him from behind and dragged him down. Hopefully it was just a cramp and then not a pull muscle of some sort. All right, Donnie Johnson with your Steve Martin Construction Field Report. 904, 96, 39. Pitch, right side, McLean knocked out of bounds. We'll have to see exactly where he is. He started at the 17, and likely that is the last play of the first quarter. And the three-yard gain that time. And it'll bring up a second down and about six yards to go when we come back. It's Riverdale 7, Smyrna nothing at the end of the first quarter. Stay with us. At the 13-yard line. Big series here. Riverdale already up 7-0, working with a fumble now. And it's Scott, 10, and stumbles down to near the 5. Going to be stopped short of the 5, picked up 6 yards, and should be enough for that first bank, first down. Jeremy King on the tackle, maybe just a little short of it, don't know, we'll see. Nope, first and goal for the Warriors. So another first bank, first down. Ball is at the seven, so first and goal from the seven. Well, I can't tell you how big this is for Smyrna to try to keep them out of the end zone. And Riverdale, of course, looking to tack on a little more here. Left side, it's Hunter, and he hits off the line, bounces off right side, and now dives forward across the five to around the four. So picked up three, and John, there was not much there, and he bounced off the line three times before Josh Day finally brought him down. Yeah, a couple of missed tackles, Brian, and Chad Hunter made something out of nothing, three yards, when really he should have been stopped at about a loss of about a yard. So a good, good run there by Chad Hunter. Not, not a pretty thing, but it was, it was effective. Second and goal from the four. Travis Milan ball rolls out the huddle. Under center, Scott Thomas. Monty Newsom, as well as McLean, and McLean gets the carry, and he stumbles his way to near the goal line. Picked up two, Jonathan Wilcox on the tackle. So a big third down and goal here, and we'll see where they spot it. I think it's at the two. Well, this is going to be really tough. You've got two chances to get this thing in the end zone, but you're going to probably, if you don't get it in now, you're going to sit there with about a fourth and one, and then what do you do? Marcus Locke is in as a back as well, so they've got lots of backs to choose from, and now we've got a timeout. Yes, yeah, Smyrna called it. I know Riverdale called it. Riverdale timeout will step aside as well. It'll be third and goal for the Warriors when we return. Mm -hmm. They sure can't do it with the starting pitch, and they got Gladden and pieced together with three others. Looks like it's going to be the Mets and Tigers if, unless something comes apart here. Right now, Riverdale with a third and goal from the two. Scott Thomas. Hands off to Newsom, and he stretches for it. I don't think he got in. He's going to be short, and Reuben Shadrach made the stop. Now it's decision time, I guess, if you're the Warriors, John. Uh, Scott Thomas is still out there, so I'm assuming that they're going to go for it on the fourth and one. That's what I do. If you, worst case scenario, you got him on the one yard line. Big play here, Riverdale up 7-0, looking to make it 14-0. Thomas on the dive. Scott pushes forward, does he get in from the one? No signal yet, yes! Warrior touchdown! The one out! Well, we thought that's what would happen, and Thomas had enough height to barely get in, but he just barely made it. Great stand, a truly great stand by Smyrna to come up short there as Riverdale takes uh, the 13 nothing lead here. And Scott's probably thanking his offensive line right now, isn't he? Well, he, and he did a good job of keeping it low and uh, tucking it under and going. 
Here's the extra attempt by Driscoll. It's up and it is good. Warriors up 14-0. We'll return in a moment. Suffering from a sudden onset of chills, headache, or nausea? Begman Family Medicine and Urgent Care Center is expanding to take care of your needs. We realize that sickness doesn't always occur between 9 and 4, so beginning September, you can receive a free gift for opening your account. Rutherford Bank and Trust, simply your bank. This is Sporting Coach Philip Shadowans. Keep up with the Bulldogs and every other Rutherford County team on WGNS. is going to be taken by the Bulldogs, Josh Day. Day across the 40 to the 42. Again, good field position. Uh, Riverdale kicking away from uh, Hendricks and Wilkes back there. and uh, Not really an onside kick, though. No, it's just uh, I think they're trying to keep away from that huge run back. And uh, good field position for Smyrna. They've got to move the football. This is a good check time for Smyrna. Down here, 14-0 to the Warriors. Warriors score the second touchdown off of a fumble at the Smyrna 40. Brian, you're 0-16 against them. This is something mentally you're going to have to overcome now that you're down 14. Gray airing it out left side, and it is incomplete through the outstretched arms of Rod Wilkes. It looks like Wilkes brought his hands in just the very last second rather than reaching out a little bit more, and I think he maybe just misjudged that just a little bit. Tonight's broadcast on GoInsideSports.com at AM 1450 brought to you in part by Prentice Alsa Heating and Air. Our friends just up the road here at the Smyrna Bowling Center, Mullins Jewelry, Murfreesboro Electric, and Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the Smyrna 42. Audibling, Sonny Gray. Has a back split to either side. Fakes the handoff, now it's in trouble, and sacked. And that is Mr. Chad Hunter. A loss of four. Well, I'll tell you, even the play action didn't uh, take Riverdale that time, and uh, Gray just didn't have any time. And, and three of the four attempts he's made, he's only had time once to throw the football. Third down, and now 13 to go, and boy, the offense has just been struggling. Jesse Torres is a receiver to the right. Wilkes to the left, and I believe Smyrna, are they going to take a timeout or what? The dangers of flea and ticks. We carry a full line of flea and tick supplies to keep your pet, your home, and your family from the dangers of these pests. You can find us at 919 Northwest Broad Street, next to the Murfreesboro Bowling Lane. Third and 13 for the Smyrna Bulldogs. Brian Barrett, John Dinkins with you. Prep football on WGNS. Here's Sonny Gray from the gun this time. Working right side, makes a bullet pass and intended out there for Jesse Torres, but incomplete. Good pressure that time from Ben Attackpoo from his safety position. And well, I tell you, Riverdale's bringing somebody every time that he drops back to pass. Fourth down now. and a hunting situation for the Bulldogs who are trailing 14-0. 8-29 left. Deep man back is Scott Thomas for the return. He's at the 25. Sonny Gray going to punt. Gets it off and it sails right side. And not going to be returnable. It's going to bound out of bounds right around the 17-yard line. A nice 42-yard punt for Mr. Sonny Gray. Sonny does not look like he is too gimpy at this point, so maybe just a cramp. Uh, a minute ago on your Steve Mark construction field report, Donnie Johnson was reporting that uh, came up a little uh, gimpy there. Well, it looks like Riverdale is wanting to stay away from that punt return no matter what. Just punt it and uh, just let it let it land and uh, don't, don't force anything tonight. Ball officially marked at the 17 and a half. Warriors on the left hash, working towards Sam Ridley here from left to right as we're facing the football field from the press box. Keeps it now. Tucks it under their right side. Stumbles across to around the 23-yard line. Picked up five before Sonny Gray brought him down from his safety spot. 
you know, the strange thing about this game, Riverdale hasn't had any field position in any of those any of these drives. You're talking about 84-1, I think the other. The only the only good field position they've had was the fumble recovery. So they have been able to move the football from those positions. Second down and officially four to go from the Riverdale 24. Pitch back, McLean, 25, 30, 35, 40, and tripped up before he got to the 40, actually, at around the 39 by Sonny Gray. Boy, Sonny showed some speed there. 14-yard pickup and a first bank first down, but Sonny may have saved the tackle and or saved the and, touchdown. And Smyrna brought about six that time. And uh, the play, though, went to the outside. They were expecting them to go to the inside. And, again, that's what's so great about that wing T offense. You just can't key on just one person. Seven minutes, 21 seconds left in the second. No score, Oakland, Lebanon. We'll get your score update on the others here in just a second. New set of chains for the Warriors. Paul Boykin's in motion now. And it's Newsom picks up maybe a couple. Allen with the stop. Second down now, seven to go. Those other scores, 3-3, uh, Siegel Laverne in the second. Laverne's got to win on out here now to get in the playoffs, remember, so they've got some big, tough games coming up. And uh, Wilson Central 7, Blackman nothing. That one in the second as well. Eagle and White House Heritage scoreless. Pitch back, Boykin left side. And Boykin stumbles up to near the 47-yard line. Picked up six, needed seven, so I think it's going to be third down and short. It is going to be third and one. Ball mark ready for play for the Warriors at their own 48. Looks like everybody finally got in, but John, look parking lot is in that open field that's beside the school. It's amazing the number of people that are packed in here. Thomas on the end around and gets the first bank first down and more. Crosses over the 40 in Smyrna territory maybe even the 39 and a big pickup that time of 14 yards and it was Allen, Quentin Allen on the tackle. Five first downs for Riverdale here. Right now, you're starting to see that the, the defense being out on the field so long is uh, even at this early is starting to take its toll a little bit. You just cannot stay it, continue to stay out there and be effective. I'll tell you what, the Bulldogs probably like this rest of this 530 to get off the clock without any more damage. Right now, Riverdale marching at the Smyrna 37. Thomas, left side, breaks out of one. And gets down to around the 33. Five-yard pickup that time. Just to kind of give you an idea across the way, the home st or the away visiting stands are full. They've got some temporary bleachers that are full. They've got standing room only area that's full. And on the Smyrna side, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I mean, they're just packed in here all around the chain link fence. Got some standing room only down here as well on the home side. I don't know what Donnie's going to do about the concession stand trip. <laughs> he may not make it back. Here's McLean, and McLean gets down to the 25-yard line. Picked up seven, and a first bank first down for the Warriors before Josh Day made the tackle from his linebacker spot. 5'10", 180-pound junior Josh Day. 154 yards rushing so far for Riverdale. Of course, you know how much passing yards they have. None? None. Right side, Julius Worthington will mention the receivers. They don't haul in many catches, but <laughs> they don't have to. Thomas. Fumble, and I think Thomas got back on it, but he tried to hand off to Hunter, John, and... I don't think Hunter knew that he was going to hand off to him. Yeah, I'm not even sure Hunter even uh, was in the vicinity in terms of uh, where he was supposed to be, or I don't know if uh, Scott was anticipating him to be there, but, uh, boy, they were lucky to get that one back. And with no loss. Riverdale's loss uh, has two fumbles, has recovered both of them, spurned a one fumble, lost it. And that led to the second Riverdale touchdown, which makes your score 14 nothing. Pot becoming a factor, 240, counting down here before halftime. 
Thomas, pitch right side. It's McLean, 20, inside 15, outside 10, to the end zone for the touchdown. Jeremy McLean from 25 out. Brian again, Smyrna gambled on the inside, thinking he was going to go the inside. They pitched it to the outside. McLean had it one block, and he was in. That makes it 20 to nothing, and the Smyrna fans are shocked, and frankly, well, I'm shocked about, we are here too. I'm shocked at one thing, how easy it's been, is, is what I'm shocked about. Here's the Driscoll Extra, and it's good. Warriors up 21 nothing. 328 left before halftime. Stay here. Oh, Bob Clark Thoughts and Company. We'll get the top dollar for your property. Hey, there. Bring that car to raise custom exhaust. Race Custom Exhaust on the new Nashville Highway, halfway between Murfreesboro and Smyrna. Phone 896 Race. High school football continues on WGN. We welcome you back. We're going to get you a score update in just a moment. Here it's 21 0, and here's the Driscoll kickoff. No, that's Alex Farley taking up the 10, 15, 20. And now right side, 30, 40. 50 and pushed out of bounds. And who is that bulldog? It's Hendricks. Well, Finally pushed out by Chaz Ward. He kind of kept looking for a block and kept looking for a block. And eventually, he went out of bounds, though, at about the 48, it looks like, Brian. But, boy, that was a heck of a run. He, he just kind of waited for kind of waited for something to happen. And, he saw a clearing in the outside on the, to the sidelines, and that's where he went. He tiptoed down the sidelines, so the ball is going to be at the Smyrna 48. Important series here. The Bulldogs could really use a score down by three touchdowns. 38-yard return. Gray hands off to Harris, and uh-oh. Nothing there. Ben Atakpu on the tackle. Maceo got back to the line of scrimmage, but was met there by a fort made up of Warriors. Second down, 10 from the Smyrna 48. 2.48 on the clock. They see the Bulldogs go to the air here just a little bit. Gray working from the shotgun, back to pass, has some time, burns it right side, makes the completion out there to Rodriguez Wilkes. Not enough for the first down, but he did pick up seven yards on that before Jeremy McLean brought it down. First completion of the night by any quarterback. Sonny Gray, his first for seven yards. Brian, they've got to put it in the air because they're running out of time here in this first half. And uh, a couple of running plays could uh, maybe have a run once, maybe twice, but uh, I think they're, if they're going to score here, they're going to have to do it in the air. Clock at 2.15. It would be great momentum for Smyrna if they could put some points on the board. Gray, left side to Maceo. Cannot turn the corner. Chad Hunter there leading the way, and he also brought in Hunter Davis. Well, Hunter Davis grabbed him at the wow. shoulder pad and held him. So Hunter got there, and I, that was an amazing tackle because Harris is not easy to bring down, buddy. What's on the line here? Well, likely the Region 4 5A title for 2006 and if you're number one in this region and you win and you win and you win then you host as far as you go so one of these teams whoever wins this game would not have to leave Rutherford County to win a state championship minute 16 fourth and five Bulldogs punting going to try to pin Riverdale back not going for it here and it's going to roll and roll and now touch back well, they just couldn't get down there to it, John, and uh, I thought Jesse Torres was going to try to down it, but he didn't really pursue it, a 52-yard punt. Uh, just landed just about a yard short, and uh, a touchback for Riverdale. They're going to get the ball here with 105, and I'm sure Riverdale's going to be content just to try to run out this clock here. Well, wouldn't think that you would see them go to the air here, John, because they haven't done that much tonight. Plus, um, you know, you throw an interception here and give Smyrna another chance. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. They're not going to throw a pass. Their bill is not going to throw a pass. <laughs> Have it all night. I don't see why they do it now. They'll take a knee. knee. And that wasn't, uh, 
find out who that is. New warrior in there, quarterback. Nobody here knows his number. It's number nine, and we don't have a number nine, so. We'll take an E again here and probably wind out the clock. And it is Scott Thomas. That three looked like a nine, but he had his jersey tucked under. He's trying to fake you off, Brian. Well, he sure is. Yeah. He's doing a good job at it. And that knee is going to be enough to wind up the clock here. And the Bulldogs and the Warriors head to the locker room with Riverdale. An impressive first half of play. And, uh, tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by our friends at Sir Pizza. Winners, trophies, and sporting goods. Fans, heating, and air. The Church Street Shoney's, Craig's Tax Service, and Jerry Potts Car Care. Hendricks and Hendricks deep back. Here's the Farley kickoff. Wilkes has it, 20, outside, waiting on a block. Now goes left side and in some trouble. Still on his feet, though, and stumbles across around the 21-22 yard line. Trying to look like he was trying to make uh, milk out of buttermilk right there. Just not, not much room for uh, Mr. Wilkes to go. A 12-yard return, but uh, he ran probably 50 trying well, to it. <laughs> side to side, he did. Looking for a block, it never did develop for him. And uh, they, Smyrna now with the challenge uh, tw down 21 here. And uh, you really feel they need to score it on. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to have to put his ball in the air. That's going to put a lot of pressure on that offensive line. Look at it. Uh, look how many people Riverdale has up front. About eight now, nine. Now they back off a little. 21 nothing. Riverdale up. Snap a little low to Sonny. Now he just tucks it and keeps it. And he's going to be brought down right around the 25, so a pickup of three. Uh, an update on the Oakland-Lebanon game. It's 7-6 and half. Oakland scored, went up 7-0. Then uh, Lebanon scored on an 85-yard return and then missed the extra right before halftime. So it's 7-6 Oakland over Lebanon there. 10-6, uh, Siegel leading Laverne at the half. We're ahead of everybody, by the way, right now. It's... Uh, Wilson Central 14, Blackman 6, and White House Heritage 3, Eagleville nothing, all of those halftime scores. Here just underway, we played a minute in the second half. Smyrna with a second and seven yards to go. Gray, five-step drop, and burns it incomplete. That looked like they were trying to run a screen and uh, really didn't, his receiver that he was looking for was uh, Hendricks, but uh, Antoine got blocked and wasn't able to get up and uh, pick up the, the football. So uh, another incompletion for Sonny Gray. Third down now. Seven to go. This might be the biggest down of this game right here. Wilkes to the left. As well as Jonah Hendricks. Two more to the right. Here's Sonny from the shotgun. Snap is low, has to pick it up off the turf, and he's running for his very life, and he's brought down at the 22. Got a flag on the play here, Brian. We'll see what it is. And that could be maybe roughing or... Hunter Davis on the tackle. We'll have to see because if it's against Riverdale, it just depends on the penalty. It may be enough to keep this drive alive for the Bulldogs. Face mask, Riverdale, and it does keep the drive alive for Smyrna. Well, that was huge. Don't know if it's the five or the big one. It is just the five-yard face mask penalty. So that puts the ball at the 27. They get the down over again here, so it's what well, it looks like about third and a long three. Here's Sonny Gray with another opportunity to try to convert here and get the first bank first down. Gray calling the audible at the line. Hands off, and it's Jonah going right side. Make that Hendricks going right side. Nowhere to go. Cannot turn the corner on the Warriors. Brought down by Rodney Watkins. Well, again, a punting situation here for Smyrna. Coming up short. 
Riverdale will probably get this in pretty good field position, too. Scott Thomas drops back to his own 40. Well, now he's backing up to his 35. Snap. Uh, it kind of hits the turf and dumps in. Thomas at the 35, left side. There's a flag. And everybody in the press box called a clip, and it looked pretty obvious. He gets up to the 40. 48-yard punt that time by Sonny Gray. Well, you're going to take off, tack on some yardage with the clip, so you're going to back them up a little even more. Smyrna needs a big defensive stand. Their defense was out there a long time in the first half. Warriors up 21-0. Clock at 9.40 here in the third. Field position really hadn't been uh, in Riverdale's favor, as we said in the first half. Uh, they're going to start this one at about the 28-yard line, but it really hasn't affected the play. Only two penalties in this game, two five-yard penalties, and that's going to be the first uh, one over five. So only one penalty in the first half, and here in the second <laughs> half we already have two. Two in about a minute. The ball at the Riverdale 28. Scott Thomas going to work under center. Hands off to three different ones and now keeps it 35 and dumped after he gets up to about the 41-yard line, and that's enough for about 11-yard pickup. Make that 14-yard pickup. Joseph Butler on the tackle for the Smyrna Bulldogs. Well, you just have so many weapons with Riverdale that you have to defend there with this wing T offense. You don't know who's going to get the ball and who's going to be running it out of there. And Scott does such a great job of hiding that football. Well, that's, you made a great point there. He does a fantastic job of hiding that football. First bank, first down. Gives them new chains here. Paul Boykin, 45, 50, 45. Still on his feet, 40. Cuts back outside, 30. And going to be brought down around the 25-yard line. Paul Boykin with a nice run. Thought he was going to be tackled two or three times. Orlando Martin finally got it. 30-yard run. Well, John, that didn't look pretty, but well, he got out of tackles when he needed to. Well, he did. And another first down for Riverdale. That's two now of this series. Only on only two plays. Ball at the Smyrna 25 now for the Warriors. Lock going left side. 20. Crosses over the 20 to around the 19-yard line. Picked up six. Riverdale up 21-0. That was your halftime score, but they're marching the football. 8-20 and counting down here in the third. Second down, four yards to go for Riverdale. Been a pretty methodical offensive series. Fakes, keeps, goes left side. Thomas is going to be down to cross the 15. He gets down to around the 13. Looks like six-yard pickup. Sonny Gray on the takedown and another first bank first down for Riverdale. Well, John, they're picking up, what, six, seven at a clip. Yeah, it's... Uh the offensive line is just really winning the battle of the line and uh, just blowing away some holes there. And Scott Thomas with the majority of the yardage, he's over 100 yards now. First and 10 from the 13. They can get a first down. It's McLean going right side and carrying the line down to near the six. Picked up seven on that one. Brought down by Jonathan Wilcox, his second tackle. Well, see, that, that's, a, that's a great case. That's a seven-yard pickup on a first down. It makes the second down a whole lot easier. Well, when you're getting six or seven yards, you're going to pick up first downs every time, and uh, especially on about two carries. A split backfield for Thomas, who's under center this time. Going to keep it, roll right side, has some room, bounces around. Going to bounce down to the goal line, to the end zone. Touchdown, Warriors. From the seven, Scott Thomas, with some fancy footwork, finds Pater. 
Great spin at about the two-yard line and was able to dive in for the score. And now we're at 27 nothing here, and the extra point attempt is fixed to be made here. Driscoll in. Here's the extra attempt. Snap is a little high. They get it down. It's up, and it splits the uprights. 28 nothing Warriors. We'll be back. Hi, this is Chuck Lewis. If you get a better price on the same vehicle at another dealer. Great selection, great prices. There's one place that's got it all. That's the Alexander Auto Mall, Northwest Broad in Murfreesboro. We're back with high school football on WGNN at GoInsideSports.com. And the toe is in the football. They kick away. And Smyrna going to have pretty good field position at around the 44-yard line. It's almost identical of where they got it uh, last time the Riverdale kicked off. They're really keeping it away from any chance that they're going to get a big run back. Down the pressure's on the Bulldogs now if it wasn't at halftime, down by four touchdowns. Well, your problem is you're running now, you're, even though it's third quarter, you got to get four scores to tie, and you've got to put the ball in the air some, which takes away your running game completely nearly. Uh, occasional run to keep them honest, but it just puts a lot of pressure on Sonny Gray. And they really had the short field to work with most of the night here. Ball at their own 44. Gray, the ball is loose. It's rolling around. And who has it? I think the Warriors do. And Riverdale has recovered the fumble, the second of the night. And that is recovered by Chad Hunter. And Chad's been everywhere tonight, and that time he pounced on that ball. And, you know, it, it just the news just keeps getting worse for Smyrna. The Bulldogs just uh, have not executed well offensively. And now Riverdale with a chance to even put some more points on the board. Scott Thomas with that folded up quarterback jersey. Makes it hard for us to play by play. I'm going gonna, I'm to gonna have to talk to him. <laughs> so what are you doing, Scott? Brian can't read your number. First and ten for Riverdale now at the 41. Play up the middle for a couple. He does such a good job sometimes, we don't even know who gets the carry. <laughs> who was it? Was it McLean? Newsom, Monty Newsom, number 27. Quentin Allen on the takedown for the Bulldogs. Officially a three-yard gain, so it'll be second and seven. Score here would be detrimental to the hopes of the Bulldogs. Defense has been out there a long time. Travis Lyland all over the football. Pitch back, going right side. Ben attack Poo and gets down to around the 20, make that 31-yard line. Five-yard pickup before Shadrach makes the tackle. I think he's going to be shy of the first down, but just barely. And we may have to measure. They are. It's going to be pretty close. They're going to have to come all the way across. Smyrna Bulldogs got to be talking to themselves right now, don't they, Brian? I mean, they just look like they're snake bit tonight. Not really moved the ball well offensively and put the ball on the carpet twice. Riverdale converted it in the first half to go up 14-0. Now working on it again. Scott Thomas has some room right side, cuts back inside, and is going to be brought down across the 20 as he gets down to around the 18-yard line. Scott Thomas with a nice run. Josh Day brought him down. And a 13-yard pickup. Another first bank first down for Riverdale. You see with that wing tee how it's so hard to pick up who's got the football. Uh, they die if that one was like the running back go to the line, into the line. But Scott Thomas had it, keeping it all the way. And it's just really, that's the success of it. And a lot of misdirection used with that wing tee. And uh, that, that makes it, that even heightens its uh success. Boykin in motion gets the pitch going left side and following his blocker. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, Warriors from 18 out. Boy, now that was a thing of beauty. Go in, go inside, go outside, quarterback keep that time. Smyrna kept the defense, the interior defense, looking for that run in the middle. And they took it to the outside, and Boykin had, had it wide open for the touchdown. 34-0. Driscoll on the tack 
on the extra. Snap, set, kick up, and it is good. It's 35-0. Warriors up. We'll be back. A funeral is for the living, and it's a part of the healing process. One of the most loving things that you can do is to pre-plan your own funeral. Let Eddie... ...on the Sam Ridley Parkway beside Kroger's. Sailor Concepts. Phone 893-CELL. This is Eagle Bowl football coach Jason Sharsh. Follow the Eagles and every Rutherford County team on WGNS. Welcome back. The Farley kickoff bounds out of bounds. Does not hit inside, so should be at the 35-yard line where the Smyrna Bulldogs get the football down here at 35-0. And John Have you ever seen a game, Brian, where the field position really didn't matter? <laughs> I mean, usually that's a big, huge key in the game, and it really just didn't. And it hasn't really mattered because Smyrna has started probably every series at least no no further than the 35-yard line. In fact, usually it's 35 or more. But they just have not been able to do anything with that field position. No, and I, we got to give Riverdale some credit on defense because they've been swarming. They've been rushing the quarterback. They have uh, played great in the secondary. Just played a great game defensively. Here's Sonny Gray going to work from the shotgun this time. Back to pass. Launches one out there and has a receiver or two there. Incomplete. There was a little bumping and pushing going on. It was intended out there for Will Martin. No flag on the play. Yeah, that was a little questionable, maybe. A few Smyrna fans down below are not happy and expressing their unhappiness. Second and 10 from the 35. Should be getting close to everybody starting here in the second half. Oakland leading Lebanon 7-6, Siegel leading Laverne 10-6, Wilson Central over Blackman 14-6, White House Heritage over Eagle 3-0. Here it is 35-0. And on the run is Gray. Makes a great pass out there. Oh, incomplete intended for Rod Wilkes. And that one had six written all over it there, John. Yeah, he was open and uh, may have been thrown a little high, uh, but he had to, would have made an over-the-shoulder catch, but boy, that was, that was a tough break for Smyrna there. Third down, 10 to go, 430 left here in the third. Riverdale up, 35 nothing. You're just joining us, and a timeout. Call 893-8885. We are back at Rake Stadium. Brian Barrett along with John Dinkins, Donnie Johnson, and Tom Hoover tonight from a jam-packed and probably over-capacity Smyrna High. Here's Sonny Gray on the third and ten, running for his very life. Makes the late pass, and it's bobbled but caught, and I think he got the first down, and I think that he is Will Martin. Yes. The catch is made up at the 47-yard line and enough for the first bank first down. Boy, John Smyrna needed that in the worst way. Oh, that was a big play and a great job of scrambling by Sonny Gray, who has had white jerseys all over him tonight. 11-yard pickup that time, so first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball at the 47 of Smyrna. Three fifty-seven left in the third. Fakes the handoff, and now Sonny's going to keep it, and he's going to be brought down for a loss. And I see Tyler Lusk back there, and he was the one who was in there first. Also, Jeremy McLean. Let's go get your Steve Martin construction field report. Donnie Johnson down on the field. Okay, thanks, Brian. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh, Burner's offense has been shut out, and like John was saying, uh, but nothing's come easy for Sonny Gray. The Riverdale defense has been swarming all night long, uh, putting incredible pressure on Gray, and that time he was sacked again. Steve Martin Construction, special deals on homes in Valley View and Southern Meadows, starting at 275,000. Beautiful homes. Steve Martin Construction, 904-96. They got some deals going on. They're giving away some TVs, I think, too. So call it. Niners Market. 904-9639. Gray going to the air and going deep, and Wilkes is there, but incomplete. 
Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by our friend Steve Martin at Steve Martin Construction. WT's markets all over Rutherford County. Carpets by Osborne. Champions Run Golf Course and our friends at Hodge Manufacturing. Don't forget we're back with Apprentice also Heating and Air Coach's Corner tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Jeff and I will be on the air back after the fall break week and back after we have the rebroadcast of Eagle Cascade. Hope you'll join us live tomorrow morning. I'd be doing what uh, Kurt is doing, the engineering. Well, not nearly as well as Kurt No, do no, it, but, no. But, I mean, you know, you're pretty good. Something about ghosts came in in the middle of it. I'm you're, not you're, sure why. Yeah, it was strange. It was really some strange <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> do have a new score for you. It's Laverne 13, Siegel 10 in the third, and uh, also in the third, 7-6, Oakland leading Lebanon. And uh, everybody underway, Wilson Central Blackman, 14-6, Wilson Central, the Wildcats leading there. It's an update on your Jennings and Ayers Funeral Home scoreboard. You can find that, by the way, too, at GoInsideSports.com. Third and 13 for the Bulldogs from their 45. Here's Gray, back to pass, and his protection has... He lost it, and now he's going to be dumped at the 40 for a loss again. Loss of about four, and Rodney Watkins was a man that would not be denied. Rodney Watkins, 5'10", 210-pound defensive tackle. He's a sophomore. Great pursuit that time, and fourth down here for the Bulldogs. This might be one of the best defensive games I've seen Riverdale play in several years, really. I know they've had a couple of good defensive teams, but for tonight, they've just been everywhere, and that play was created by the secondary because the secondary coverage was so good that really wasn't that big of a rush but Sonny didn't have any place to throw it to and now we've got a false start here by Smyrna it's going to back them up I'm not sure that they care David Limbaugh has a score for us it's 14-3 at half Lincoln County over Coffee County I think that's Lincoln County according to David Limbaugh's handwriting I'm, yes. I'm not sure but he types everything you know and he does and we job. know why he types everything now <laughs> That's a five-yard penalty, Brian, by the way. And that's going to back up the Bulldogs here on the punt. Scott Thomas is back. Snap is high to Sonny. He gets it down and makes a nice boot, and I mean nice. Can Smyrna get down there to it? They can. It's going to roll to the five. Mm. Nice punt by Sonny Gray. A 59-yard punt. That, that's some good offense right there. Back them up to about the five changes the field. Now, if you're smart, you need to get the football back here in a hurry. Brian, you are a news director. Uh, yeah. As of also a sportscaster. Mm -hmm. But we have a severe traffic jam out by Smyrna. A lot of folks leaving the whole road area. Yeah, there's a lot of people leaving the exit the building right now. Boy, they're flocking out of here, but Minute 35 left here in the third. Get some new scores here for you in just a second. Here's McLean on the pitch. 10, 15, and 20. And still on his feet. Keeps those wheels a turning. Ball came loose really late, but he was down already. 15 yard pickup. Another first bank, first down for the Warriors. Cody Sutherland on the takedown there. The latest scores now. And on our Jeans and Harris, Harris Funeral Home scoreboard, Laverne over Siegel 13-10, Lebanon over Oakland 12-7 in the third, Wilson Central still leading Blackman 14-6 in the third, and White House still that halftime 3-0 lead, Nets and Cardinals 4-4, we should be getting an update on that pretty soon. It's 35-0 here, Thomas fakes the handoff and now is at the 30, flag flies in there, 35, going to be a hold in here, everyone believes. I can give you an update right now. It's 5-4 Mets in the fifth. 5-4 Mets. Well, that's a TV game by Fox, I think, so that'll probably last till about 12.30 tonight. Don't they go on it, forever? It's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, you, you I don't start the game it. at 7.30, 7 o'clock. Kids, no wonder kids are falling out of love with baseball. They can't stay up and watch a game. And it's, it's, baseball is slow in its own right. <laughs> well, television advertising is probably baseball's, you know, savior, you know, so they do that because they advertise them, sure. sure. It's going to be a holding penalty against the Warriors, so that backs Riverdale all the way up to the 19-yard line, 46 seconds and counting down to the end of the third, with the Warriors enjoying a 35-0 lead. On our broadcast, we have commentary as well as play-by-play -play action. 
I'm glad you prefaced that by being commentary. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the game, baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's Locke. Going to get it and go left side. 30. Going to be ridden out of bounds right around the 32 or so by Rod Wilkes. Going to be a 13-yard pickup by Locke. Seven first downs now, second half. They've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people running the football tonight. I'm going to have to change my stat sheet You there. are. Give you a little more. For Riverdale, you're going to have to put like 10. And then kind of the receiving, I could just like not even put that on there. <laughs> Thomas, and Thomas needs two, two lines. <laughs> the plane needs two lines. We we could just yeah just like you said just do away with the passing part yeah. you know maybe maybe three spots. <laughs> that was a first bank first down for Riverdale. Stop the clock at 20 seconds. Pitch back, 35, 40, and that's going to be a seven yard pickup, and that's Chaz Ward on the carry, and takedown by Will Martin. And there's your third quarter. It's Riverdale 35, smart enough nothing. Fourth quarter coming up in a moment. Hi, this is Frida Morgan at Rutherford Bank and Trust. I wanted to tell you about our new Simply Free Business Checking Account. And then uh, the last week they will play Lebanon. So they would, these two teams at least favored to win out the rest of the way, I would think. And if that were to happen, things stay where they are right now. Riverdale is going to win the region again. No game there. It was Chad Hunter on the carry. Brought down by Cody Sutherland. Going to bring up third down and three. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Welcome all of our online guests tonight as well at GoInsideSports.com. I noticed we had a Texas in there. Several of folks, several folks joining us tonight. Glad you're along with us at GoInsideSports.com. Don't forget our podcast will be up there after tomorrow's Coach's Corner, too. Scott on the counter play, right side, now left side, 50, and shoestringed as he crosses over into Smyrna territory. Going to be down around the 43, and Orlando Martin, had he not tripped up Scott Thomas right there, he saw pay dirt in his sights. 18-yard run there by Scott Thomas, who is vying for our TriStar Home Mortgage star of the game, I would think. Well, he's vying for it, all right. He's, he has been got a, a good shot at it right now. And I handled it, handled the ball well, so well. You know, just handing off and first and ten, ball at the Riverdale or the Smyrna 41. Lock on the pitch outside. 35, 34, stayed in bounds, picked up six. Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by our friends at Jennings Tire and American Tire Company, Bob Parks Auctioneer, Stan Vaught, Loveless Fine Photography, First Bank, Little Caesars, Pizza Pizza. We're serving that here at the ball game tonight, by the way. And Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, who helps to bring you the uh, Monday Ideas Inside Sports team, but not this Monday. That's We're right. off this Monday because we've got to rest up for the two shows back-to-back -back, Monday and Tuesday, the 23rd and 24th the following week. Right side, and here's Chaz Ward. 30. Ball loose on the fumble, and Riverdale recovers the fumble. Isn't that amazing? They've had three fumbles wow. they've recovered off the rev, and the Smyrna's fumbled twice and lost both of them. That's the story of the night so far here for the Bulldogs. Monty Newsom recovered the fumble for Riverdale, and that gave him a first bank first down. You know Lady Luck shining on you, John, when you get a first down on a fumble, you know? <laughs> and that's the ninth one of the night. Right side, here's Ward. Cuts it up inside. Ball loose again, and it's picked up! And does he get in? Yes, touchdown. I've got to see who it is. On the fumble, it went right into the hands of, I think, Julius Worthington.
Well, I'm trying to look and see. It's either Worthington or Valarosa. I think it's Worthington. Aaron Valarosa. Wow, what a play. Bounced right in his hands and to the end zone. A Valarosa with the touchdown. Well, the extra is good. Your coach said, Owens, you're, you're, you're kind of sitting there going, you know, now come on. You know, come on. It bounces up. It goes right into the hands of a Valarosa who hasn't touched the football all night, and he runs it in for a score. That's just, you know, that's almost storybook right there. Warriors up 42 nothing. We'll be back. Music World and Drummer's Den is Murfreesboro's newest music instrument and drum store. We've got a great selection of drums, guitar, basses, keyboards, all your music accessories. We have Learn From a Pro lessons on drums, guitar, bass, great variety and excellent prices on all of our instruments. This is Dave Kiven and me inviting you to do business with our family here at Music World and Drummer's Den. We're across from Indian Hills on Church Street. Inside Sports at the game with Prep Football Cover. Welcome back to Rake Stadium. Ryan Barrett, John Dinkins, Donnie Johnson, Tom Hoover, the late two nothing. The late Kurt Miller. The late. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> We've been through this once. Please no. He's being ugly. <laughs> being ugly in commercial breaks. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, we love you, Kurt. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> we do. Okay. Are you saying you need him more than you need me? That's what well, you're saying, isn't it? Come on. I just know what the alternative is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what the alternative is for me. Well, then look behind uh, you. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble any way I go. <laughs> Here's the kickoff by Farley. Smyrna gets it up to around the 32. Sanders on the return. Take down by Dominique Reed. Well, Brian, seriously, this is just not exact, exactly the game that Smyrna had anticipated. Quite frankly, not the game we had anticipated. No. Uh, but, boy, turnovers again. We mentioned that before the game. Turnovers are huge, and those are four fumbles that have just turned into, you know, Riverdale gold. First and ten here for the Bulldogs from their 32. Sonny Gray hands it off to Hendricks. Hendricks bouncing outside, 40, and going to be taken out around the 42. The latest scores now. On our Jennings and Ayers Funeral Home scoreboard, Laverne over Siegel 13-10 at the third quarter. Lebanon still holding on to that 12-7 lead in the third. Wilson Central ups their lead, 21-6 in the third quarter. And Wilson White House Heritage ups their lead over Eagle, 10-0 in the fourth. 4-4 Mets, a 5-4 Mets over St. Louis in the fifth. The Tigers won tonight, 3-0, or won today, that is. They're up 3-0 in their series against the Oakland A's. First bank, first down for the Bulldogs. Snap is low from center. Sonny Gray going to run it now, 45, 50, 45, and going to be pushed out of bounds around the 42-yard line by Rodney Watkins. Nice run that time. 13-yard gain. Lebanon. We may have a different score there. Lebanon is up 12-7. We may have a different score from Kurt Miller, and we'll uh, check that here in just a second. Here's Sonny Gray on the first and ten. Warriors up 42-0, by the way, right side. Pass is complete to Rodriguez Wilkes, and he's out of bounds at the 35. Taken down by the Riverdale Warriors, Sean Bell. Second down and two. Smyrna moving the football now here. Two wide outs to the left, one to the right. Goes right side. Hendricks. And oh. taken out by a tack poo. Gonna be close. I don't think he made it. 
He is going to be short. They're not going to measure, so he is short about a yard. Here's the third and one. Spurn, of course, would love to score. Left side, Hendricks, 30, 25, and down to about the 22. Taken out by Chad Hunter. So a first bank, first down for the Bulldogs. It's the ball down to the 22-yard line. Twelve seven is your eleven and Oakland score. Twelve seven. Eleven and leading Oakland. Right side, Gray finds Wilkes. Eighteen seven. Just got another update. Eighteen seven, eleven and leading Oakland. Eighteen seven, eleven and leading Oakland. Five yard gain. Second down and five coming up here after the five yard gain. Trying to give you all kinds of score updates and follow this game along here as well. Jonathan Wilcox over the football. Sonny Gray working from the shotgun. Seven minutes left in this one. Trailing 42-0. Left side, it's Harris. Rambling down to around the 12. Taken out by Monty Newsom. Third and short, third and about two. Gain of four on that one. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Franklin's Printworks, Portable Sign Company, and our friend KJ Harden over at TriStar Home Mortgage. And bring you our player of the game here a bit later on. Sonny Gray calling the audible at the line. Back to pass, and he is sacked. He is mugged out there by Ben Atakpu. He was blindsided, and he didn't see him. Wow, what a play. That's been the story tonight. Uh, Gray just really hadn't had a lot of time to pass the football, and uh, uh, when he has had time, he's missed a couple of receivers, and there was a drop there. But uh, it's been a tough night for Sonny Gray, no, no question about it. And this really a tough night overall for the Bulldogs. He just... And, uh, the Lady Luck, but it's it's been a lot of Riverdale, not just Lady Luck tonight. So here is your fourth and four. Smyrna going for it. Nothing to lose here. Back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. 20. Tucks it. Going to be taken out right around a 17, and that is going to be well short of the first down. And Riverdale going to take over here. He dropped for a loss of two. Well, now we're at the part of the game where we're going to see Riverdale just uh, run it. They get three and out, then they are. But uh, they're going to run the football like they've done all night. Nothing's going to change. And uh, i got to give kudos to the Riverdale offensive line tonight, too. They have broken open some holes tonight, and um, their whole, that whole group. And you I said I, that was going to be a key to the game, you and know. They, and they won, the, they won the battle of the offensive line. And, uh, you know, guys like uh, Forrest Hill and Travis Lulenthal, David Spurlock, Justin Patterson, all have uh, played remarkably well tonight and uh, have basically made a statement. Scott Thomas going to remain in here at quarterback. Probably will not run it very much, however. And it's Jeremy. No, it's not Jeremy McLean. That's there's a new back in there, and that would be Mr. Josh Van Hoos. Prano on the tackle for the Smyrna Bulldogs. Tonight's game brought to you in part by our friends over at Playos Grill on Broad. Bob Parks auctioneer Bob Bug. Bowen's Body Shop and Bob Parks realtor Sunet P. 4.49 left in this one. And he slips down and that he is uh, Aaron of Alarosa who scored that touchdown a minute ago after the ball was fumbled. It bounced and bounced right into his hands. 
and he took it in. Well, now that's what you call a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mom, that's what I got. Got some new scores. That's Laverne 19, Siegel 10 in the fourth. Lebanon leading Oakland 18-7. Wilson Central over Blackman 21-6. And White House Heritage over Eagle 10-0. Going right side is, once again, Mr. Valarosa. And he picked up eight for being taken out by Jonah Hendricks. First down moves the chain. That's, of course, the first bank first down. 15 first downs for Riverdale to six for Eagle. Five for Smyrna tonight. That's five total now for the Bulldogs. Travis Lylenthal, the anchor on the offensive line there at the center spot. Rolls out the troops under center. This direction going left side. And it's Valarosa again, picking up three or four. Scott Thomas remains in as the signal caller. We've not seen a lot of misdirection tonight by Riverdale. In fact, that's the, maybe one of the three times I've seen it tonight. Uh, very effective, and that time the Valarosa picked up another couple of yards. Riverdale playing pretty much all the running backs, uh, the younger kids now. Uh, Scott Thomas still in the game, but you will not see him unless it's his desperation run the football anymore tonight. Or unless he finds, you know, like a wide open hole somewhere and takes it upon himself to make it. Pitch back. Chaz Ward, right side, 45-50, 45-40. It's a foot race. Can he make this last pass? Yes, and he scores. Chaz Ward, 66 yards. Boy, once he got around the corner, is all she wrote. Chaz Ward, one of nine Riverdale running backs that have, have made some kind of contribution tonight, positive yard-wise. Driscoll on for the extra. Snap, set, kick, up, and it is good. 49-0. Warriors up. We'll be back. Oh, Bob Clark Talks and Company. We'll get the top dollar for your property. This is Jim Thomas with Bob Park Talks and Company, inviting you to this Saturday's auction. The state auction, Saturday, October 21st at 10 a.m. in Murfreesboro at 3168 Briarwood Drive. A three-bedroom, two-bath brick home. Furniture and glassware will be auctioned off as well, along with appliances, electronics, and tools. Auction Saturday, October 21st in Murfreesboro. Bob Parks Auction Company, committed to auction excellence. Hi, this is Renee, and I'm Ray Curry's daughter. When my daddy died, it was his dream for my son Michael to carry on. When you need to replace your exhaust system, come to Ray's Custom Exhaust. If you don't want a custom exhaust system, we can replace your original system back like new. And on top of that, I promise to save you money. So if you want a custom exhaust, or you just need to replace your old exhaust system come to raise custom exhaust on the new nashville highway halfway between murfreesboro and smyrna wgms and go inside sports.com your exclusive home of rosary county prep football back at rake stadium riverdale's just scored to make it 49 nothing kick off down the middle hendrix hendrix 25 30 and return that time of 22 yards. Laverne's just scored again, making it 26-10. Laverne in the fourth. Basically, Laverne's got to win out for Oakland to make the playoffs. They're going to have to beat with Lebanon because Lebanon would have beaten both Laverne and Oakland, and they would be the one to sneak in the playoffs if they win that one tonight. Right now, Oakland's trailing 18-7. And the possibility of Laverne winning the rest of their game is pretty good. You know, it's, it's pretty good shape if they, if they take care of business. And on the carry is Macy O'Harris. And Harris going to be brought down at the 34 for a three-yard gain. And Marcus Locke on the tackle. Thought if the way things would have to work out, 
is that Oakland would have to win one of their next three, but they've got to beat Lebanon because Lebanon has beaten Laverne, even though Blackman won. Blackman's still in the mix here now, John. If Blackman can pull the upset here, even though they trail Wilson Central, I mean, they've got to win out, too, and they could sneak in mathematically. Still some scenarios still out there, but... Uh, if they lose tonight, it's probably just, yeah. not going to happen. And Oakland has got a tough two games left. Or three. They're going to have a mad bulldog team next week. And then they got Riverdale the final week of the season. On the carry is David Sanders, and he's going to be brought down for no gain. Minute 41 left in this one. Riverdale, a 49 nothing victor, it looks like right now, unless a few things change. A penalty flag against Riverdale. It's a face mask penalty. <laughs> Here's the second down and two. Jonathan Wilcox. Barking the signals is Mr. Sonny Gray. Just had a tough one tonight. Sanders. 40, 45, 50, 45, and in Riverdale territory at the 44-yard line with a minute 15 left to go in this one and a nice 15-yard pickup. Don't forget, coming up, your Prentice also Heating and Air fifth quarter show. We'll have all of your stats, all of your information, replays, scores. To get you settled in for First Bank Friday Night Finals, which is coming up. Gray to Sanders. Sanders going to rumble down to the 41-yard line. Nice broadcast brought to you in part by our friends at Jennings and Ayers Funeral Home, AG's Sporting Goods, Middle Tennessee Monogramming, and Rutherford Bank and Trust. David Summerall on the tackle for the Riverdale Warriors. Sack it down, and we'll call it seven. 32 seconds left here. Riverdale, a few seconds away from a shutout if they can hold them here. Sanders goes up left side, maybe picks up a couple of yards. 16 with 15, and this one's over. The Warrior fans across the way are celebrating a victory here at Wright Stadium. Their 75th consecutive victory in the region, and it comes against the state's sixth-ranked team and their cross-county...